Abby, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. For those on Zoom, I know that it is 5.30. Uh, we are waiting for one more member to um, arrive in order to have quorum. So I'm going to give them five till, and we'll get the meeting started then. And if we don't have the member, then we will have to reschedule slash cancel. So just give me a second. Mm -hmm.
This is for me. Yes, sir. Okay. You're ready, Mr. Chair. Okay. Is there a mic or am I just talking? You're just talking. Okay. I did a mic okay. check, so we should be good. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's call this December 3rd, 2024, Ward 3 Neighborhood Advisory Board meeting to order. Can I get a roll call? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ilya Arbitman. Here. Thank you. Marie Rodriguez. Here. Thank you. Uh, Zachary Bolton. Here. Thank you. And then Jarrett Singh, absent at this time, Mr. Chair. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to A2 public comment. Um, oh, here's Gabe. Uh, cool, yeah, Gabe is here. Um, yeah, each public comment. Uh, looks like there's two people here. I don't know if there's anyone in the Zoom. I do have members on Zoom, so I'll read my disclosure. Uh, Mr. Chair, our first item today is public comment. Members of the public may hear, observe, and provide public, public comment virtually by registering through the following link, which can be found on the reno.gov forward slash meetings portal. And the link is as follows https semicolon forward slash forward slash l i n k s period r e n o period g o v forward slash four eight c e seven capital n capital n it should be noted for those in attendance that comments are to be addressed to the board as a whole comments heard under this item will be limited to three minutes per person and may pertain to matters both on and off the agenda the board may not take action upon any matter not agendized on today's agenda. When you are called on for public comment, please state your name for the record and begin speaking. The timer will begin when you say your name and you will be afforded three minutes. If you are an attendee in the Zoom meeting and would like to make public comment, please raise your hand at this time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I haven't received any in-person public comment, but if you'd like to give public comment at the end, there's another portion at the end. And then if anyone on Zoom, you would use the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen and you'll just raise your hand at this time. And then seeing none, Mr. Chair. Okay, seeing none, we'll move to A3 to approve today's agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chair, prior to uh, approving the agenda, I do wanna note one change. So item C1 is being pulled from today's agenda. The applicant has rescinded their application. So no um, TBD date uh, when they'll be coming, so. So no C1. No C1. Okay, do I have a motion to approve without C1? Marie Rodriguez, for the record, um, with the removal of C1, I approve today's minutes. Uh, Zach Bolton, uh, second that. Correction agenda. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, agenda is approved, and we'll move on to the minutes. So there's two meetings here. I think last month's when I wasn't here, so a bit longer. Um, so when you guys are ready, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Marie Rodriguez, for the record, upon reviewing the minutes from October and from November, I would move that we approve them. Uh, I Jack second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, aye. Minutes are approved. Um, Council, we'll move on to A5. Council liaison report, but unless Council Martinez is here on Zoom. He is not on Zoom at this time, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we'll move on to A6. And I think we do have a staff report. Yes. Um, so I do have a presentation today, Abigail Mayorga, community liaison for the record. Um, you'll be seeing these moving forward. We're gonna kind of make our little liaison report a little bit more in depth to provide you guys some opportunities uh, for engagement. So these are just some things that are happening in the city of Reno. The first one I wanted to discuss is the city of Reno, Reno Citizens Institute uh, for the year 2025. So from February to May, RCI or Reno Citizens Institute, participants will meet with the city of Reno staff to gain an understanding of the city's structure, processes and services through hands-on exercises, presentations and tours. Um, ultimately, this is an opportunity for citizens to engage with the city of Reno if they're looking to kind of get a better understanding of what they do, what happens around. Um, I know it's a super cool time. They go to RPD, they go to maintenance and operations to see uh, some of the stuff that they do. Um, and I know it is a little bit of a time commitment, um, but applications are due uh, January 3rd. Um, so if that is something that some of y'all are interested in, I encourage you guys to apply. I know there is limited seats as well. So, um, but that is available through this link and I'll put it in the chat for our people as well, our Zoom people. Um, okay, 
And then the second one, which is also included in the packet, and I have flyers here, is the Wilkinson Park survey. So Wilkinson Park, which is located in Ward 3, is due to replace uh, next year. Um, so one of the things that has been a priority for our Parks and Recreation Department is in, uh, including inclusive um, play features. Um, the best example for those who haven't been is Dorothy McAlinden Park in Ward 4. Uh, they have the new inclusive um, equipment for all ages and um, disabilities, which is awesome. Uh, but they are looking for feedback to be able to rank some of the different features that you're interested in. And I'll put that survey as well in the chat, but that I have a flyer here for those who are interested. Um, there's a QR code and they're just looking for feedback. Perfect. Um, as a reminder, as um, you know, it's getting darker, snow is sure to come and just anything that you guys see out in the neighborhood, I wanna reemphasize the importance of Reno Direct. Um, if you see a pothole that needs to be filled or you know trash that needs to pick, be picked up, Reno Direct is our kind of our one-stop shop for all the things that need uh, that you may need assistance within the city of Reno. And even if you don't know if it's in the city of Reno, it may be Washoe County or Sparks or Bordering, um, they are able to kind of navigate you to the correct entity. Um, so you're able to call or submit via online. So just wanna do a slight reminder um, if that is something that you're looking for as an in information. And then upcoming, we have a City of Reno Council meeting tomorrow and begins at 10 a.m. The next planning commission is scheduled for December 5th, which is Thursday this week at 6 p.m. Um, so some of the projects that we saw come to the NAB in the previous months should be on that um, agenda. And then our next NAB will be January 7th at 5.30 p.m., hopefully in council chambers, so we'll be back to our regular location. And then finally, I did want to give an update on our members. So our board right now consists of four or three NAB members. Gabe is here as a member of the public. His um, application expired, but he did submit for reappointment. Um, so hopefully we'll be seeing appointments in January. That's when they're scheduled for. So we'll have um, some new members and new old members, hopefully, depending on uh, what Council Member Martinez is looking for. So I will keep you guys updated. We are always looking for applicants. Um, if you're interested in serving for the Ward 3 NAB or in the Ward 3 NAB or any other board and commissions, you can just go to the Reno.gov meeting or Reno.gov website and go to the boards and commissions um, tab and you'll be able to submit your application. Or if you're interested, um, I can help you walk through that. If the um, portal is a little bit difficult, we have the printed version and it's it's too easy. So always looking for that. And if you guys have people who are interested, please feel free to plug that in. Um, and then also in our January meeting, we'll kind of be doing a reset. So we'll be looking to appoint chair, vice chair and a couple of different things. So yeah, that is my update, Mr. Chair. Um, okay, and Ilya Arberman, for the record, I just, can you just a little bit more? I'm kind of curious about the Reno Citizens Institute. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, what's, um, uh, like, what's the timeline? Like, if people do it, how long do they do it for? What, just, like, what's, like, a weekly commitment? Yeah. And is there, like, is it basically just, like, getting tours and stuff? Or, like, when you're saying hands-on exercises, yeah, what does that mean? Right. So, it, it looks like it's seven weeks. Um, it's a seven-week commitment. Um, I can play the video. We have time. I'll play the video. Yay! And to get a better understanding of um, what the city of Reno does on the system. I signed up for RCI because I wanted to get a little deeper into the knowledge of how our city functions work and how I could maybe potentially give back to the community I love. But I've been in Reno for approximately 10 years, and I really wanted to be a part of the community and learn about our city government. <laughs> Main takeaway would really be that there's a lot of opportunities to get involved. Um, there's always openings on committees. You can always join in and help and volunteer. Uh, bueno, el programa, yo pienso que es muy importante um, saber de la ciudad donde vives, uh, todo lo que ofrecen. I was blown away by how little there is to the staffing of our city. They have such great big jobs and this phenomenal team gets it done. I guess I never realized just how complex the city is and how many pieces have to come together for everything to work. Um, so for me, it was just developing a much deeper appreciation of municipal government and just how cool the city of Reno is.
I would uh, definitely recommend this to friends and family or anybody who just wants to get connected with um, information on city government. Yeah, absolutely. I would recommend this. This is, uh, has been a phenomenal experience and I've gotten to meet just a lot of amazing people, both in the city of Reno and in the cohort itself. So great time. Absolutely. I think that anyone that wants to learn more about the city of Reno and um, what keeps the gears grinding should definitely take this class. I really am a proud constituent of our city. After this class, I just appreciate it so much more. I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so is it called Citizens Institute or Constituents? Citizens. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but um, great opportunity. Yeah, thank you. And, and, uh, Marie? Marie Rodriguez, for the record. Um, yeah, I know there is some confusion because when I saw it, I saw citizens, but the email that went out to employees says constituents. Yeah, the video did. So it's citizens, yeah. I, I think it's the same thing. Yeah. Constituents are citizens. So right. Yeah. <laughs> um question though about Reno Direct. Um yeah. would it be possible for us to get and where could we get like I know they have always had those little business cards and I think it'd be great if um the mm -hmm. members of NAP could have like a stack yeah. so that if they run into citizens in their area, they could always hand those out. I know that we do, you know, as employees. Yeah, so. perfect. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. We can definitely yeah. have that. I don't have a couple yeah. I think in here, maybe. Yeah. So I might have run out, but yes, yeah. I will make sure to bring them to our next one. No, not that one. I, I just think um, it'd be great for the net yeah. to have those to hand out. That's no problem. Awesome. But yes, that's all I had, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any further oh. questions? Back any questions? Oh, um, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, let's move on to B1, uh, the draft public art master plan. Megan? Like, Jan, I don't know what the best place <laughs> to present to this, but. Good evening. Megan Burner, Arts and Culture Manager, for the record. Nice to see you all. Um, I'm here to present our public art master plan update. This is our draft that is ready for public feedback. Um, this has been a year long process, just about, we started in January of this year. Um, and the, the plan updates Reno's public art master plan, which we already have one, which was adopted in 2002. So that original plan established a framework for the city to manage a public art program that has become valued and enjoyed in our community. Um, the program has been operating under that old framework uh, with just some modest adaptations since then. And so this plan really provides a comprehensive review of the program um, and recommendations for moving forward. It includes a statement of how the program should impact the city, an outline of the work of our, our public art program, program should focus on and then proposals for adapting the administration and funding of the program. You can go to the next slide. Um, so the process, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview. I'm gonna zoom through this. It's a 69 page document. Um, some of it's dense, some of it's not. It's, it's enjoyable to read if you're interested at the end, I have a link that will take you there. So um, the process, like I said, was started at the beginning of this year by a consulting team led by Todd in association with Amina Cooper and Jessica Cusick. And Todd is on the webinar today. If you have specific questions that you'd like to ask, um, he's here. The planning process involved extensive research, public engagement, and analysis of our program's operations. Um, first, to gather input, we organized a public survey and that went out asking people who live in or work in Reno to share their thoughts about public art in the city and in general. We received nearly 600 responses, which is pretty good for city surveys that go out. Um, and I'll show you some of the results of those later on in the slideshow. We also had the, the team also circulated questionnaires to current and former members of our Arts and Culture Commission and our Public Art Committee, so similar citizen board um, like the NADS. 
and artists who have worked with our program before and organizations that have also worked with our program. And then the team reached out directly to Reno Artists for input. So during the course of this planning process, we have been doing um, artist focus groups and workshops four times. We did one in April, one in June, one in September, and the next one is coming up next week, the final one. Um, these were open public workshops, some virtual, some in person. And in each workshop, we talked to artists about um, public art practice and then also got their input onto the plan at whatever stage of development the plan was in. The, we, the team also conducted interviews with city officials, arts community and civic leaders, and toured arts facilities in the city, um, and also conducted a focus group at the University of Nevada, Reno. And then they did a research phase, which involved review of city plans. So not just our old public art master plan, but all of these city plans, like the new Truckee River Vision Plan, our master plan, there's a downtown vision plan, um, things like that. They looked at our public art program budgets from past years, all of our requests for qualifications and requests for proposals, calls for artists that we put out, um, and our ordinances and guidelines. So we do have a 2% for our ordinance, which helps fund our public art um, and previously adopted policies and guidelines. And then they also contacted 10 public art programs elsewhere in Nevada and the Mountain West to explore how they fund and govern their public art collections, project development, artist rosters, community engagement, um, to just get ideas and to see how you know, we benchmark in relation to other cities. Um, so the, throughout the process, they also worked with an in, internal and external stakeholder group. And the internal group was uh, city, um, folks from city departments that we work closely with in the public art program. Uh, we work closely with our maintenance and operations department, our public works department, our building department, because we have to engineer artwork and get permits and things like that. Um, and then we also had an external stakeholder group from other public agencies, nonprofits, and community um, groups. They reviewed the plans progress at every stage. And we're at the bottom here getting input on the draft. Um, so we have a few opportunities for that. So in general, the consulting team found that, like I said, that Reno residents enjoy public art in the city. They'd like to see more. Um, some of that feedback was particularly on aspirational or iconic projects. So that think big, um, people were interested in seeing something on a large scale. Um, while Reno has a lively art scene, artists don't always seek their opportunities to, to connect with the public art program. And so that's part of the third point on there, building a more robust public art ecosystem that really encourages public artists um, locally to get involved and to work with us and to have us help mentor them through the process. Um, Reno's public art ordinance is overly detailed and should be streamlined. And so that's some of the streamlining processes and updating the governance processes accordingly with this. Um, so uh, eliminating unnecessary steps in decision-making processes and um, building that more robust public art ecosystem. You can go to the next slide. I'm trying to go through this quickly. So some of these are direct snapshots out of the um, plan. It's structured into six basic sections. Um, I just kind of went through the introduction and then there's a who is Reno and what inspires us. There's a vision section where we are going and how we will get there. And then the last section is really the guidelines, policies, all of that kind of dense, more of the day-to-day -day how, we, how we run our processes. So you can go to the next slide. This I thought I'd share with you out of here what inspires us. This was directly related to the community engagement phase and that public survey that we put out. And you can see how these comments from folks and a lot of the, um, sort of polling that we did led to some of the recommendations in this plan. Um, so things like different public art forms, um, more variety, art in neighborhoods, this large scale idea of a large, large scale um, artwork. I'm not gonna go through everything because it's really, there's a lot. You can go to the next slide. And this is more of that. Um, people are really interested in murals and interactive artworks. 
And then also thinking about how artwork can tell the story of the city, be more representational of our, our heritage, our culture, the people that live here. We can go to the next slide. Um, I, I, I wanted to share this slide about why public art is important to Reno. This was also um, sourced from a lot of what we heard back from the public. Um, people felt like public art made Reno feel like home um, and that it tells Reno stories. So there's some of that, that in that recommendation that I mentioned before. Um, and that public art gives Reno a fresh and inspiring look and supports economic development as well. Next slide. Um, and this is also, this is like a new recommendation um, based on some of what we're already doing, but giving us goals to strive for um, that we should address with each new public art project. So to deliver projects that offer multi a multifaceted narrative of who Reno is, that foster belonging and connection, engage the communities that we are developing public art projects in. Um, we've really worked hard to, to turn our processes into more inclusive processes. And there are some recommendations in here that will allow for more people to be involved in um, decision-making with public art. And then building the capacity of artists, communities, and organizations to participate in public art. So these are some of the big ideas that I was telling you about in the vision section of sort of where we are going. Um, these were, again, based on feedback that we heard from folks. They value things like the river and the skies and light here, um, thinking about how we're surrounded by nature. And so some of these ideas came from some of that, some of the development in Reno, like the mural of giant size. Um, you can go to the next slide. And then I, there's, there's little details. Like I said, it's a 69 page document. Um, if you are interested in looking at it in more in depth, you can scan that QR code. You can also go to renoculture.com and then there's a mechanism. So that will actually take you to a survey or a questionnaire that has a link to the full public art master plan update and um, will allow you to give feedback as well. So we're seeking feedback on this. If there's anything that we missed, um, that's important to you all that didn't get put in here. We would love to hear that. Um, eventually, sometime maybe in January, we're aiming for this will go to city council for their adoption and approval. Um, and then it'll become sort of the official document that governs our public art process and our public art program. So I am happy to answer any questions. Yeah, Elie Armand for the record. Um... Just I saw like the giant mural um, that says it's on the side of a distribution center. Um, so are like murals like I'm thinking of that one that's on Virginia, like right there, the like really tall one with the person taking a yeah. photograph. Is that a private mural or is that a public? Art? That is private, and the suggestion for that one also would be privately funded. Okay, got it. Um, there are mechanisms through our like planning department. Um, Certain areas have zoning codes that require pedestrian amenities or public facing amenities. And so some of the idea there is to encourage folks to consider public art in spaces like that where landscaping or you know, benches, pedestrian size amenities like that might not make as much sense. Um, but no, it would not be publicly funded. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then are things like kind of along the same lines like bike racks and things like that or like functional stuff you know because there are some kind of sculptural bike racks around town is that sort of in the category in this we do that? commission bike racks um artistic bike racks they have to be made by artists and yeah, yeah but we do so that would be considered as part of yeah did that show up anywhere streetscape yeah so there is there is mention in the plan of streetscape and functional artwork as well okay cool bike racks, benches, those kinds of things. Um, I was able to find on the website that you guys had an interactive map that showed basically where all the art is in town. I thought that was really cool. You guys have something like art walks where you could take more of a tour of the city or? 
We actually don't currently have anything like that. Part of that is like we have very limited staff. Yeah. Also, a lot of our artwork is spread out. There used to be a nonprofit in town that did mural tours in Midtown, which most of those are privately commissioned and not on city property um, because of the density of murals there. And so it made sense there. We actually don't, but that is also something that came up in this process was that folks would like to have digestible things like that where they could go on an art walk and maybe we could help develop those through that map and then it could be self-guided. Yeah. Um, but to give people these areas where there's more concentration where you could do a tour. Perfect. Yeah. I agree with most of what the, the survey said. I would appreciate something that really defines, you know, what the culture of Reno is in an artistic form. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Oh, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If you have any feedback you want to provide online, we would appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, no C1. So I think that's it. No. Okay. So moving on to D. Um, yeah. Any announcements here from the board? Okay, guys. Um, no announcements. Future agenda items, so we'll move on to closing public comment. Um, yeah, but, but it's just uh, that was, that was in, the, in Abby's report. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Closing public comment. All right. Um, if you would like to provide public comment at this time, and if you're a member on Zoom, I ask that you raise your hand. And then if you're in person, last band for public comment. Mm -hmm. Being done, Mr. Chair. Okay. Well, short one, guys. So, is, do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, I would like the motion that we adjourn then. Uh, <laughs> I second it. Okay. All in favor? So Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Everybody have a good holiday. For you. <laughs> <laughs>